everybody, thank you for watching today. So I'm going to be showing you how to make this really fun wiper shaker card. Now also in this video when I show you this card there's a lot of techniques so you may not be bothered by the wiper style but I'm going to be showing you how to heat emboss on acetate, how to use this lovely fluffy stuff to create this kind of faux wool effect and I'm also going to show you the mirror stamping technique. So this is this stamp, but I flipped it so you can have the two of them skating together. Really fun. But if you've not seen a wiper card before, you just pull the sides and up pops Bow Bear, who in this case is a polar bear because he can also be a brown bear. And I'll just show you the other examples of using this wiper set. So although I have a bear popping out, in the die set you do have the speech bubbles. So with this one here I've got the penguin, but this time it says let's pop up a party. And I have the stamps to show you later. And then I've done this one here, which has got three more of the critters. And then there's Beau Bear as a brown bear, pops out the top with his gold crown on, glittery crown. You also have the meerkat, very, very fun. Works brilliantly with this wiper mechanism. And then we have the Z fold. So those were all using the 5x7. This is using the 5x7 Z fold. You've got all the reindeer, and then you have Rudolph with his red nose. All the little props, all of this all come in the different stamp sets. And then you have the 6x6 wiper set. So here we've got all those lovely shiny balloons with Eve the elephant, and then up pops her friend. So they're really, really fun cards, but like I said, I made this one during a Facebook Live and I showed you a lot of techniques. So tips on how to get good shaker card results, like I said, the heat embossing, mirror image stamping, how to use all these different mediums. We've got glossy accents for the ice there, and then the fluffy stuff. And it's just a very fun card. And the backgrounds I also made using the mica powders during another Facebook Live. So enjoy this video. It's a little bit longer than usual, but hopefully you'll pick up lots of tips along the way. Okay, so I want to really focus on the techniques in this video. So I'm going to quickly show you the card as I put it together, but it's, it's very straightforward. So this is my 5x7 wiper die set. So for those of you that have it, and I'll share all the links below, but you get your main card shape here. So you want to die cut two of this main shape and it will give you these two pieces here. Okay, and then you have these two here. So you'll want to die cut two or four, depends if you want to cover the back. I cut four and you'll see I've cut them in white and I've used them on these sides here. And then I just cut these pieces so I had a matte layer to cover those as well. Now I do have other wiper cards on my channel so just check out the playlist that I'll share here to give you more inspiration. So you want to do like I said two or four and then this one here will give you your matte layer and you'll want to do two of those. I've done one in white, this is the back, so I've already prepared all of this, you don't need to see me stick it all down. You just stick the mats and layers into the panels and I'll show you how to fold that in a moment. But you'll see here I've just cut the one in the white and I'll show you the stamps in a moment. And then I've die cut another one in this gorgeous paper here and this is what I actually made again during a Facebook Live and this is using mica powders and some gouache paint to create that snow and I wanted to make a lot of backgrounds and use them in my up and coming Christmas cards and some samples that I'm going to be taking when I do my next launch and I'm just really pleased with this and you can see the blue one that I created on this one here and you can see the silver running along the sides there just sort of look really really nice so I've gone for the green one today so choose your papers your mats and layers all that kind of stuff and then you'll also want to cut the mechanism, which is this one here. So it's this piece and it will emboss this score line here for this triangular part. And that's what I've already created here. So when you die cut it, you want to run. I've, I always use red tape because I just find it's just quick. It's good for me when I'm doing the tutorials. If you want to use liquid glue, you can, but don't go to the edges because when you squeeze this, you don't want the glue oozing out onto other parts of the card. It might interfere with the mechanism, but just die cut one of those. You've also got a really nice sentiment there. It says, yay, it's your day. But because this is a Christmas card, I've not needed to use that. And you also get the speech bubbles that you can have popping out. There is a smaller one, which I have put down somewhere that needs to go in there, but you get those as well. Okay, so I've got my main matte layer here. Now I've also cut a, another piece of white that same size. And this is what I'm gonna to use to create my frame. So on this one here, I've done it in silver, but this one I'm gonna do white. So I have this die, which is from the Card Making Magic, and it's the rectangle nest of dies. I believe it's still sold out, but I'll share the link below because you can always send your, you can put your email up so that you'll be notified when it's next in stock. But it's really nice, you get the double stitching on this one as well. So if you want a measurement of this one, just for a guide, it is three and a half by, it's just under six. So I'm gonna pop that in the middle here, and I'm just gonna, tack it in place and run that through my machine. 
Whenever I'm die cutting onto white, I always like to add a sheet of copy paper on the top. It will stop any of these markings on your top plate going through. And there could be some ink, you, you know, you, you, these plates pick up all kinds of bits and pieces from the dies and stamps that we run through them. So by just adding that sheet of copy paper, it just means that this stays nice and crisp and white and everything. But now I've got my aperture cut out of my frame. Okay, next I want some heat resist acetate. So I've got the Crafters Companion here. You get a pack of 15 sheets, ideal for stamping and using on embossing or glittering. Perfect for card and box apertures, which is what we're going to be doing. So I'm going to grab, you can, if you get your acetates mixed up, I find that you can kind of tell if it's a heat resist. It has a very, very slight blurriness to it, but it doesn't affect the, you know, you can see through it and everything and it feels ever so slightly rough but it's not it's, it's hard to explain when you have them you'll know you'll, you can feel the difference and you can slightly see the difference between a normal acetate and a heat resist acetate so with this one here I want to cut it so it's just smaller than this main white piece here so I'm just going to lay it on the top I know this is hard for you to see but you just want to make it just slightly smaller than this white frame so whatever size you've got and then I'm just going to mark with a pen just so I can see it just a little bit there and a little bit there so I'm cutting it to again it's only if you're using that same die that this will really six and a half by four and a half okay but unless you've got that die it's not really going to matter so I'm just going to cut this down to size this black piece of paper because I think it's going to make it a lot easier for you to see what I'm actually doing so next you want an anti-static powder. So I've just got my little pillow here and I've got this, this is by Woodware. I like the pillows as opposed to the pens. I've just always had these. I used the pen once, I didn't really get on with it. So, but give it a really, really good covering of that powder. And then I like to rub it on my fingers as well. If you're anyone like me and you use hand cream and oils on your fingers, I'm always doing my nails you will you know this grease will transfer onto here so I just give them a really really good covering it will make all the difference because now when I hit you know and pick up the sides here I'm not going to leave any marks and the powder is not going to stick to those areas so that's all ready now the stamp I'm going to use is the same one that I used before but I'm going to position it slightly more to the left than I did on the other one so this is again this is old I use this I think I've had it two years now and I know lots of you have it as well because it's just a good all-rounder. They're really nice. You get Merry Christmas, Happy Christmas and Season's Greetings and it's by Woodware and it's the clear magic, big Christmas words. So I've got my Happy Christmas here. These photopolymer stamps. Now you can use a stamping platform if you want to, but I'm going to just do it like this. So you can see here I've gone more into the middle, but I'm going to bring it over a little bit here because the way the Christmas arches, I think it's going to kind of shape around this penguin a bit better so again just make sure there's nothing on there so I'm just popping it onto my acrylic block and I'm using my Versamark there and then with the frame I'm going to sit this over the acetate and now I can see where I want to position my sentiment now I have already cut coloured and everything and I've done my mirrored one but I'm going to do it again to show you but these are my two penguins here so they're going to be towards this side and I know this sentiment fits because obviously I've used it on the other card but if you kind of position everything roughly where you want it and then I can see now I think by having it more over this side it just kind of like I said it just wraps around that penguin a little bit better so I'm happy that that's all going to fit so I'm going to leave it all there because it's not going to affect me stamping but give that a really good inking and obviously this will slide so you do just want to place it down just tap it lightly like I said if you would prefer using the platform then do so but I did do it freehand during the live so I'm going to do that just making sure the happy is nice and kind of parallel with that frame and then just sit that down it kind of does stick and then just make sure And I can lift this all off and I can see there you can just about make it out when I catch it in the light but that's transferred really nicely so next I can pop my 
embossing powder. So I'm using this one here, which is Cosmic Shimmer. It's the Detail Embossing Powder. It's a new one that I picked up in terms of the size. They've done this one for a long time, but I knew I'm going to be doing a lot of embossing over Christmas. So I just got myself that bigger one. But I think when I shared it on my What Did I Get, I then saw it had been sold out. So I think quite a few of you have picked it up, but there'll be other sellers that sell Cosmic Shimmer. But you just want to tap that, flick it off, Always put it on an area where it's got less area to fall off. So don't put it on and then tip it all down this side because I don't need to worry about any of this area. It's just here. Now, can you see there's like a light dusting? I'm going to wipe a bit of that away, but also you can wipe it off with a damp cloth afterwards. You won't get it with all embossing powders, but I think because this is such a fine powder, I noticed it with this one, but that's like I said, it's not a bad thing. I'm actually just going to pop this all back in here. And then I'm just going to take away any excess with a brush. Do it as close as you can without interfering. And you can just also use your little buddy again, like so. And now that is ready for me to heat set. This is when the magic happens. So with any, whenever you do any heat embossing, make sure your heat gun warms up. You want to keep it going for a good 30 seconds before you actually start embossing. Start heat embossing because the less time this has on the paper or the acetate, the less warping you will get. So it really is a good idea to just let it stay on for a minute. There you go, it was literally seconds that that grabbed and melted and you can see it's nice and flat and you've got a lovely you know, window sheet now. But you can see there is that kind of almost mistiness behind it but that will wipe away in a second. So I'm just going to tidy this up. Okay, let it cool completely, which it has, and then I'm just going to spray a little bit of water on here and then I've got a little bit of kitchen towel. And you can just wipe that away. And I've got a piece of dry kitchen towel there just to really kind of buff it up and it will really make that powder shine. There we go. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? It's got a few finger marks in there, but I can wipe those all off in a moment. But isn't that absolutely gorgeous? Love this effect. Okay, so now we want to stick our frame onto this piece here. So what I'm going to do is run some red tape, just a thin red tape. I do find these ones really handy. I got them from Crafters Companion. You get a lot on the roll there. When you buy your red tapes, look for the ones that have a smaller white ring in the middle. The smaller the ring, you're actually getting a lot more tape. So although the overall size is small, you're getting considerably more than you do on the rolls that have a big white ring in the centre. I used to buy them and I didn't really take no notice. And then I started looking at it and I thought, actually, you want to be getting the ones with the smaller inner ring. Okay, I'm going to bring in this black piece of cardstock. It's actually helping me see it better as well. So, yeah, you want a darker surface, I think, so you can see things better. So I'm just going to run this around the frame. And then I'm just going to turn my frame over and stick it from the back. I think it's a lot easier and you can really make sure you get your sentiment where you want it then as well. So now I've got my window there ready to put onto my card. So then that piece now is going to sit behind and you'll see that lovely sentiment catching the light and we're going to fill this with our artificial snow. So I want to now go around the frame with some foam tape. Now I've run out of my silicone foam, foam tape but when that happens I then do my own strips. So I basically use, this is just wax paper, grease it up for a pound, very, very inexpensive. And then I use my actual foam tape here. Again, I pick these up from the pound shop. I don't buy expensive ones. And you just run a strip, just cut a bit of that paper away. Just run a strip down here. And now you can cut this to any width you like and it won't damage your scissors. So I'm going to just cut them in half, so that's plenty that fit within that frame, like so. And then you can just peel the backing off of the top, like so. Just do a bit at a time and now you can just start to run that around your frame. And then when you cut, cut on top of that 
you know this piece again so you're not damaging your scissors so again then just take the backing off and then when you're applying your foam you want to make sure you butt it up at some point to the other one so they you know any of your little beads and things like that that you stick inside they're not going to fall out so again Also, just trim this before you stick it down. You don't need all that. I was just quickly doing it to show you, but just trim all that away because you'll need the space or the, to see the area to tip in your little shaker pieces. But now I've got my foam all there attached on the back, and it's a very inexpensive way to do it. Okay, so next I've got this iridescent snow. I picked this up last year from Simply Creative, which is by Trimcraft, and it's just got these lovely... Oh, tip it out there I forgot I just opened the end there you go that's something funny for you to see but anyway you can see there it's got that gorgeous glitter running through it so I'm going to use this because I've cleaned my desk so there's no other bits on there so now you just want to sprinkle it into your area here now also another little tip which I can still kind of do I should have showed you but you can use your anti-static powder it's not so bad on this because it's quite nice when the snow kind of sticks around the sides but if you and this foam isn't too sticky on the sides, but if you get a brush here, for example, if you have this in a little pot, mine's attached to my drawer, so I can't take it out, but there's loads of dust in there, but you can kind of put the dust on your brush and brush it around the sides here, and it will stop anything sticking. You can also just go in there and just kind of rub it along the sides, because you've still got the backing on the top, so it's not going to interfere with the overall stickiness, but it will just reduce any static again inside here but also stop these bits sticking to the sides so but with this kind of theme and the snow that I'm using I actually think it looks quite nice anyway but if you're using sequins it is a good one to do so I'm going to add a little bit more in here because once it settles I want you to kind of be able to see it so you can see if I bring in this one here that's it settled there so you can still see the sentiment nicely so if you kind of flatten it down you can see how far down it's going to kind of settle. I think that might be a little bit too much actually. It is it's surprising it's quite thick. I think we'll stick with that. I think that's going to be enough. There we go. So now I'm going to take the backing off. Now with this one it's exactly the same size as the main white frame. So I'm going to start at one end and just line it up and then just kind of roll it along until it all seals inside. So now, yeah, that's perfect. So you get that nice settling of snow, but obviously look, it all moves around as well. So whoever gets it, they can shake it up. But I do want it to just settle nicely there. I think that looks really cool. So that's the shaker part done. So hopefully you've picked up a few tips, you know, how to do that. So I think now we'll put the card together and then I'm going to show you the mirror stamping and that lovely fluffy stuff. So you would have die cut these two and you've got these score lines. So what you want to do is with the first one is you're going to create a valley fold and then a mountain fold. And you'll do that on both of the pieces, as you can see there. And then you're going to have one, but this one I'm going to keep that way, and one will go that way. And that's how they're going to stick together. So you can see my back's already there. And then this is the front, which we will stick this piece onto. So I'm going to grab my Kalau glue. And you just want to add your glue just on one of these. I always put my mechanism in once it's all together. I find it the easiest way to do it. But on that playlist, I do show you some other ways as well. So find which one works best for you. So now you just line this up with the edge here. And obviously it's all been die cut so everything is nice and straight and it all marries up nicely. And then I'm going to fold that one over and then you want to add your glue to this outer rectangle on the one below. And then you're going to fold that in and fold that down. And when this is flat, that is the 5 by 7 card shape size so that will now fit inside your envelope and you can just see that's why I like using the liquid glue because you can line everything up okay and then I'm also now going to stick this one on top
Okay, so now we have this effect. Next you want this one here. I've just taken off the backing there of my mechanism and I've done this in the same pink colour, however I have done many using acetate, so if you've got something that's like a flying object or the speech bubbles that come in the die set, they're really nice to do on acetate and I'll show you an example in a moment. Okay, before I stick that down you actually want to trim some off of this one because it's going to be too high, so I'm going to take about an inch and a half off there and then just run some of that glue again, just stick him on top like so. You might also yeah just fold that over and then you pop this one in and you want to line up the side of this with that fold just in here and just bring it down until the top of the neck's just covered and just push down on that triangle piece and then when you close the card he will or she is completely concealed inside and then pops up. Very very fun. So next we're going to start popping all these down I'm going to show you how to do that mirror technique. Now it's very easy. Now I use the John Nextdoor media plate. Now if you don't have this it's basically a giant piece of photopolymer so it's what lots of the stamps are made of but some people will also use the back of a large stamp so if you've got a large maybe background stamp use the back side of that the foam side and you can use that to create your mirror image also some people use jelly plates so you know have a little play around some because jelly plates are a little bit softer it might squash the image this media plate's a bit tougher so you know i'll link it although i do think it's sold out but i'm sure you know there's going to be other ones that you can use so like i said i've already done it and colored it because it was just keeps this video short i don't want it to go too long so i'm already obviously talking about lots of techniques in this one but if i now just remove the magnets and pop it in here now it does go over the edge but I prefer the smaller one my larger ones one of these is broke so I'm going to stick with the little one but I'm going to stamp it within this area where it's stuck so although it's overlapping onto that area it's going to be fine here so the stamps I've used is from the Christmas Critters A5 stamp set so there's the bear there's that reindeer that I showed you and then there's the penguin and I've also cut the mittens and you've got the scarf there to go on the polar bear which we'll put on in a moment. There's the let's put up a party, very merry Christmas and to a dear friend. So I just want to make sure it's going to stamp where I want it so like so. So you just just imagine that this piece of media plate here is your piece of paper. All right pick up your stamp and then I like to use the VersaFine it's the one that you see me use all the time you just get nice crisp detail images. So a mirror stamped image is never going to be as crisp as the original image so you know don't expect to get it 100% perfect but you can get it good enough I mean you can see there's my mirrored image and there is the original so it's just a little bit crisper but you know I am using detailed stamps so depending on what you're using if you're just doing a flower it's perfect you probably won't notice any different so now when you lay it down don't go and push because you're you're pushing two soft kind of materials together you just want to do light little taps because you can always lift this and go back in again so I would say if you're doing the mirror technique a stamping platform is going to really help because if you don't get a good impression first time round, trying to line it up is pretty difficult so like so so I can see that I need to put a bit more pressure on the face yeah, I think we're good to go. I'm going to go over it once more. And always prep your stamps first off. If this is a brand new stamp, I like to rub my hand over them, kind of get like the factory chemicals off of it, or give them a good wash on, with some warm soapy water. Yeah, that is really good. I'm happy with that one. And then what I'm going to use is this piece of paper here, because this is a smooth, you want a smooth cardstock as well. Not too worried about the front now. I use this back side. I can probably get away with that side. It's just to show you anyway, but just sit it down here and then I like to roll it over the image and then give it a good rub and then again peel it off the same way and there you have a really nice reversed stamped image. And now a tip for die cutting this, because we have the dies to match, so here we are. You won't be able to see, but I've got my lamp above me and I've also got the window. If you hold up the card to the lamp, okay, and pop the die behind 
until you find the perfect outline. So I'm just doing it now, just to kind of roughly. So now that is in place to die cut that image. Run it through your dye machine, pop a piece of copy paper over the top to obviously protect it, and then it will be cut. Now because you're getting the cut from underneath, this is obviously you're gonna have that, that raw edge. I just go around it with a bone folder and just flatten it. And you would never know, and you have two perfectly cut images. Okay, so hopefully that helps. I did show that technique when I done the reverse stamping with Jerry the Giraffe from the first collection, and um, lots of people really liked it, so I just thought I would go back to it again. So now we can start arranging everything. So with this one here, I also added this piece of white paper along the top, and it just gave you a really nice snow effect. So I'm just gonna use this bit of paper here, which I ripped before. Now I know I've ripped that bit, but I'll show you what to do. You wanna rip towards you, and it will give you, you kind of go into it a bit more, create a little bit of kind of, yeah, I think that'd be quite good. And it'll give you like a bit of a snow mound look, something like that. Yeah, I quite like that. And then I'm just gonna mark with a pencil the end. I probably could have done this before I'd stuck it onto the main card, but I think it'll be okay. So I know I've got the white square frame there. Some of you might be thinking, well, you've already got a white frame, but I don't know. There's something about it. I just think it, it looked nice. So what I then done is I added some glue along the top, just on that kind of raw edge. And then I'm just gonna get my bag and just kind of dip it in there. And you now get that snow all along the top there. You can see all that glitter. And then I can just, I'm gonna use this same glue. I only need to tack it in place, I'm not too worried. Because I'm gonna be sticking other things on top. And then I created the ice by using the glossy accents. So there is a lot on this card, which is why I wanted to just spend a bit more time. So hopefully you'll take away lots of tips and techniques. So even if you're not making this actual kinetic style, you can you know, create this on other cards. But can you see there's like a glossy accent. So it gives the look of water or ice in this case. And I'll add that on once I've stuck these down. So I'm gonna use some foam pads. So I'm just gonna pop a couple on there. And then I'm going to stick like so, and I'm going to add a little heart where their hands are. And then I've got the one present, which is just going to go on the edge there. And then I've also got, I call the bear Bo, it's called Bo Bear, or she, and then the hat. Again, whatever you add, make sure it's going to close. So you can see that I know it is because I've done this before. But you don't want it to obviously catch on this bit here. But there's that. And then also I've got the scarf. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue just around. Actually, it didn't need to be on that end of it, but just around the neck. And this will fit. You don't really see it, but it's there. It's there for anybody who really does look at the card. There we go, just see it poking out the top. And then I've also got the mittens. Now I didn't add these before, but you can have them. Obviously if you imagine the one with both of them on, they look quite cute. So I think I'm going to just put them on the outside ones. Obviously you can use any size heart, but I just took the one from my my slider die set, so I'm just going to die cut that one. Okay, so that's stuck down. I've realised I forgot to show you the fluffy stuff because you want to do it before you attach your images because you're going to be applying a lot of heat. So I'm going to show you on this little stamped image here. So this is what it is, Cosmic Shimmer fluffy stuff, okay? And all I'm going to do is just, goes on like a paint really, like a thick white paint. The, the thicker you do it, the bigger the kind of fluffiness you're going to get. But I'm going to just do it on the actual pom-pom there on the hat and on the the rim of the hat there as well okay so I'll just bring that up so you can see where I've just covered it I'm gonna let this warm up
okay so hopefully you could see that all lifting now you will know when it's done because it will slowly stop and I would advise don't keep the heat really close to it because it could brown it so but now you can see let it cool it will be kind of like soft to touch but it gives a great effect so that's what you do so I'm going to leave it off these ones here I don't think they need to have it anyway and then I'm just going to finish now with the glossy accents so I always like to add these to their eyes on any of the little critters that I always colour so a couple just to make their eyes nice and shiny and then I just kind of scribbled it I was making an awful squeaky noise like so just to look like the ice and then to finish off the card I have some snowflakes And I've also just added some glossy accents on the heart there, but you can see the snowflakes. So there is a lot of technique, a lot of texture and movement to this card. And I think it's turned out brilliantly. So again, pull the sides and up pops Bo, who I've said is gate crashing this lovely winter date. So I hope you've enjoyed these cards from me today and I'll be back very soon with another tutorial. Bye.